I would love to go to a rally with Donald Trump come. Because I'm a big Donald Trump supporter. And I will support him 100%. Oh, yeah, definitely we're going to show him love. We're going to show him a lot of love. And, you know, like they do in other states. We definitely need to see Trump here. There's nothing but love for Donald Trump here in the South Bronx, the North Bronx, the East Bronx, and the West Bronx. So, you tell we me... Want, we want Trump to come back. Please, bro. Biden, get out of here, bro. I will come to the rally and support Trump. Because the Bronx need a change. And we need somebody that's really going to help this community. I would definitely come to a Trump rally in the South Bronx. I like him. You do? Yes. Yes, I will come to a rally if President Trump was to come to the Bronx. And I also would bring other people to come to and support him. Would Joe Biden get a warm reception if he came to the Bronx? No, he wouldn't have. And I'll make sure of that. <laughs> People are absolutely waking up. You know, more and more people are waking up every single day, and a lot of people are waking up for the very first time. And it's remarkable to see. You know, it's it's easy to get pessimistic, think that, you know, you're the only one that sees things a certain way. But what we're starting to see is pretty awesome. And I want to show you something I stumbled upon and just listen to this clear white supremacist. This lady has got to be some kind of crazy white supremacist. She has got to be stopped. And the democracy protecting Democrats. I have a feeling they will do anything they can to stop her. It's the Democratic Party, they promote black women, mm -hmm. particularly if she's a lesbian. Yes. They promote black women who are not even qualified. Mm -hmm. We have seen with the diversity, equity, and inclusion, which is really racism, which is really saying, well, black people just, darn it, they're, they're not smart enough, so we have to give them handouts. Exactly. And you're pushing black women who are not qualified, Dr. Claudine Gay of Harvard. Oh, yes. Now the head of diversity at Harvard is also accused, if I have it correctly, <laughs> of plagiarism. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll get to Fannie, Fannie Willis, who was elected as a DA in Fulton County, Georgia, primarily because she's black, in my opinion. And we've seen case after case. But the black man, where is he? That's done deliberately. And it started really in the 60s where the Democrats pushed policy, right, that said to women, particularly black women, you don't need a man in the home. We'll give you more money if, you, if you're single. And I grew up in the 70s and I saw the effects. I saw it in the 80s, the broken home. Now it's more dysfunctional home where you have some women with eight children by five different fathers. You know, I can see the liberal eyes rolling right through the screen as they hear this right now. And they don't know what to say. They don't know what to think. I'm sure most of them are fighting the urge to say something that they don't even realize is rooted in their liberal white savior racism. They want to call her uncle this or aunt that or whatever. And it's like almost just a part of their being. And all these thoughts that they're having right now, they all lead to the same place. They all lead to the butt Trump comments, butt Trump, butt Trump, butt Trump. Before we end up down that road in the comments, I want to give a quick reminder. None of this has anything to do with Donald Trump. What this woman is talking about is rooted in fact. Lyndon Johnson's Great Society, so wonderfully named, decimated and destroyed much of the black community. Now, was it some sort of cabal designed to over time defeat an entire race of people? No, I don't believe so. If it was, they pulled it off perfectly. And it would be the very, very first time our government has done that. I don't mean hurt people. They've hurt plenty of people but it would be the first time they ever pulled anything off perfectly. I don't think anyone in our government then or now or ever has been smart enough or diabolical enough even to do that, to pull something like that off. What I do think is I think it's like most things the government has done, they may have started with the best intentions, but those things never ever work as intended. Bureaucracy can never work as intended. They just, they don't have the ability to see or consider the true X's and O's of their policies. They don't know who their fathers are, in and out. It's, it's, it has almost destroyed the black community, but they're doing it in a different way now. They're promoting black women and want black men to be down here. And I think black men sense that, and they know that Trump relates to them. They relate to Trump very well. The evil well, he's a Barack, Obama. Yeah. Barack Obama. Barack Obama is a foot soldier. Oh, yeah, for he's the globalist yeah. elite. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Barack elite. Obama was a plant. Yes. Yeah, he was. He was. And now they want to put Michelle Barack on. Obama was yes. a plant. <laughs> Definitely. 
He did nothing for the black community. Nobody even knows who he is. Did he ever come back to Chicago with as much crime to talk to young black men? He doesn't give a damn. He doesn't. He doesn't. Barack Obama is a curse on this nation. So is Joe Biden. I think it's the black. Yes. We provide the money for his Marxist socialist programs, pushing abortion in Africa and other things. He didn't care about us. No. He didn't care. That gave rise to Trump because Trump actually listened to us. He actually cares. Many of us, I mean, it was bad. At least Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton BS and said, I feel your pain. (laughs) But at least he said it. Barack Obama didn't give a damn. He should have never been elected. Before he was elected in 2000, he got elected in 2008. My mother sent, may God rest her soul, letters to black churches warning them about Barack Obama, saying he was so ungodly. I said, Mom, that's harsh. She, she wrote it anyway. That's right. And everything my mother said, may God rest her soul, was right. He hates this country, but he wants to live off the fat of the land. Like the founders of Black Lives Matter, they don't give a damn about black people. They didn't have to spend one dime to help build a black business. But these lesbians, they bought homes in predominantly white neighborhoods. See, they say they hate capitalism, but they love to use us and live off of capitalism (laughs) while they spout an anti-God, (laughs) anti-America rhetoric. Oh, right. I just they got you in a black community. They put us in danger. No, not all black people are drug dealers or this or that, but you're harming the average black who lives in an area that has is high crime. When you talk about defund the police, and we saw the other day in New York City, where you have illegals beating up NYPD officers, oh, that went viral. But under Trump, something like that would have been dealt with immediately. He would have spoken out immediately. Alvin Bragg, from what I understand, helped them to be get out. No bail. No bail. Yeah. No bail. bail. There is a concern among Democrats that the vote for Trump is hardening within the black community. It's solidifying. It's not just a passing fancy. And I think Democrats both black and white liberals, they're, they're panicking. Some of the reasons why blacks, particularly black men, are drawn to Trump is that he puts America first. He puts Americans first. We see that Joe Biden and his administration, they're now in this battle with the state of Texas to cut down the barbed wire. We, ladies and gentlemen, have essentially an invasion of our country going on. Great. Black people are waking up. All you have to do, I would recommend, if, if, if you want verification, go on YouTube. Black residents in Chicago, type in Chicago, black people, immigrants. They are fed up. Black people are now feeling the effects. You know, when these liberal mayors, oh, we want to be a sanctuary city in New York. LA, even Newark, New Jersey. We want to be a sanctuary city. But you see, they don't put the illegals where Nancy Pelosi lives, where the elite live. They put them with us. And I'm not anti anything, but it must be done correctly and fairly. I mean, the hypocrisy of these leftists and liberals is stunning. All right, so obviously, not everyone is going to agree with what that woman says. But you know, contrary to what we're trained to believe in the year 2024, you don't have to agree with every single word somebody says in order to find some agreement with them. And, you know, you don't even have to agree at all. You can just appreciate that this is the way that that woman sees the world. But that's just not the way the human mind works anymore. We're not going to do that. People are going to see this and they're going to vilify that woman. They won't even be able to tell you. They won't be able to illustrate exactly why they disagree with her or what she said that was wrong. They'll just vilify it because that's the only way A modern day liberal knows how to respond to common sense or logic or wisdom or math, anything like that. I mean, they reflexively suppress, they reflexively oppress people just like this woman. And then in the very next breath, they carry on with their virtue signaling fight against oppression. It's amazing. You you can't even make it up. But the sad thing is, if they would just take time to understand the woman, to hear her, to listen to her, her lived experience, 
and everything that has informed her worldview, you know, they may actually learn something. But that's just my take, guys. I thought you'd appreciate that. Let me know yours in the comments. And if you haven't already, guys, be a part of the channel's growth. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, share the channel. I'll see you in the next one.